Hey there, this is Therese Skelly, and I am so excited that you are going to be listening to an episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. Do you like those two words? Fiercely Brilliant. My hypothesis is that you are here for a reason. We all are. Our souls have led us on journeys that have very often taken some twists and turns, and sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes there's struggle and there's loss and there's challenge, and in the middle of that, there's always a way out. And it's those times that often lead us into our great life and work. So you're going to hear stories in these episodes of myself and other beautiful people that share the journey. They share how they got to the place where they're standing, working in their brilliance and being the powerful leaders that they are. So stay tuned and enjoy this episode. Hey, this is Therese Skelly with another episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. And woo, gang, you are going to love my guest today. I fell in love with this woman when I connected with her. And I was like, I got to bring you to my people. So I'm super excited to bring in Ogea Koseeme. That is a mouthful. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Did I say it okay? Did I, I, didn't, I didn't chop your name up. Fabulous, fabulous. So, oh my gosh. Okay. What I just, I always like to start by saying, what do you do and what do you love about it? What do I do? I play. <laughs> I play. I don't work. And I play with people to bring out their soul's mission, their soul's assignment on earth, um, specifically now in this time, yeah. to, to put their soul's um, assignment out into the world. And I work primarily with people who are visionary, mm -hmm. who are way showers and creative and I like mysticism as well. So <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. So cool. Well, what I know of you is one of, the, one of the things I loved in your story when we talked is that you were known for one thing, like high ticket. You're the high ticket girl. Go to her to get your high ticket offerings nailed. Mm -hmm. And now you're over here. And so yeah. tell me about that jump, because for a lot of people, that would be like, well, but, but, but wait, I'm, I'm known for this. I'm making money, right? So how, did you get a calling one day? Like, how did, you, how did you follow this path? That's an interesting one, because it, in hindsight, it was a calling <laughs> okay. that was always there in the back. It's like, now I'm like, duh. But no, it wasn't like I suddenly woke up one day and I had a trip to Damascus and the lightning <laughs> <laughs> it really wasn't like that. It was actually a very slow parts of it on um, mm -hmm. um, painful uncovering for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, I will say though, again, in hindsight, the pain is because I was still holding on for dear life to what I knew. And knowing what I know now, what I tell that past self is let go of it now. Let right. go of it now. Let go of it now. Do not hold Ooh. on any longer than you need to. So, Gay, okay, though, if, if so, because I know a lot of people are in this state, right? So, if somebody is in that, you know, like if a death grip, like I'm holding it, what would they have to believe in order to say you're going to be okay? Like, like, because that's not easy. So, yeah. add something there. That's such a Good question. It's a brilliant question because I address that all the time. And the one thing you are just going to have to begin to adapt to and adopt mm -hmm. is self-belief and self-trust. Mm. Okay. Um, there is no way you're going to do this journey of the way shower and the seer and someone whose soul's here to do mm. audaciousness. Which Love that. We, we establish our souls are here to do and the people who are attracted to us, that's yep. what their souls are here Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. There's no way you're doing audaciousness and missing out the element of trusting yourself. You really have to begin now. Best time to start trusting yourself was 20 years ago. The next <laughs> best time is now. <laughs> I say that about skincare. You know, I should have listened. <laughs> Damn, why did I not listen 20 years ago? Okay, but here's the thing. Yeah. If somebody, because you're here and you want to shoot up to here, right? 
-hmm. What if they don't have the belief? What if they don't have, like, it's like, it's like, it feels like this energy of your soul pushing. It's like, yes, yes, yes. And then your ego, your small self is like, oh, hails to the no. Like, how do you reconcile that gap? Because that's what keeps people paralyzed, right? Mm, mm. Do you know, self-trust is like a muscle. It mm -hmm. really is mm -hmm. like exactly. a muscle. That's what I found. And it goes hand in hand with intuition because somewhere along the line, your intuition is nudging you. Yeah. And one of the ways to start to exercise self-trust is actually start to listen to the intuition. Because as you listen to your intuition and it's guiding you, you're going to get to a point and you're going to look back and think, wow, oh my God, next time my intuition hits, yeah. I'm listening. Right. And next time it hits, I'm listening. So listening to your intuition is a really good place to begin to practice self-trust. So what, what is your inner being? What is your intuition guiding you to do right now? Mm -hmm. What is it guiding you? And the thing about intuition, Therese, it never comes with fear. Ooh, it's hold fear. on, hold on. That's a, that's a mic drop. Hold on, hold on. Because the, the distinction, Ever. right, the distinction, because a lot Ever. of people are like, yeah, but I feel afraid. So that must be true, which that's actually bullshit. That's not true. Um, so That's not intuition. That is something else. That could be a gut feeling, which yeah. I distinguish from intuition. And what gut feelings are or body sensations are, every experience we've ever had is registered in our body. Every single experience. It's like our body has got its filing cabinet. So you come up against an experience. Say you're coming up against something unknown. Perhaps in the past you came upon an unknown thing and the, re and the experience of it wasn't very pleasant mm -hmm. so when you're hitting that unknown again your body's gonna start reacting it's gonna go stop 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 right. unknown ahead unknown ahead last time unpleasant last time unpleasant fear 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 because fear is there to stop us mm. it's it's there to stop you so you have a moment to reflect pause and reflect and assess whether what your body is asking you to stop for is worthy of stopping for. Ooh. Because you decide. Do, do you see what I mean? I get it. I so get sometimes it. that's what's happening. It's not intuition. Yeah. Intuition doesn't come right. with fear. But I wanted to make that distinction because they are both valid communications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I walked into a room with a lion there, I'm <laughs> body. <laughs> I don't care what intuition is telling me, right? <laughs> you know, there's a goddamn lion in yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So it's really, so the fear is to protect you. And I think, unfortunately, we just get habituated to, well, I'm afraid, therefore I can't. As opposed to, yes. I'm afraid, okay, let's understand that dialogue with that and yes. then have sovereignty to move past it. Exactly. Did I say so it okay. make, that's it. Yeah. Make choices. Yeah. Because when fear hits you, you're looking at just one choice. Right. It's similar to anger. When mm -hmm. anger comes because you've narrowed down your choices to just that um, tunnel vision. Yeah. There are other choices available. All fear is is your body saying stop and evaluate. I love that. It's not saying stop and don't do it. That's a beautiful reframe. I've not heard somebody talk about that just about, I say it keeps you safe, don't listen to it, but I love this reframe. Okay, so again, let me ask you, when you mm -hmm. jumped from here to here, did you ever have any people thinking you were crazy? <laughs> did anybody yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how did you navigate that? Because a lot of people yes. would think that's kind of a crazy move. So how did you go through that? Crazy, you're not being practical, you're not being <laughs> realistic. There you go. I even had people say, there she goes, who does she think she is? Oh, oh. Yeah, that was a whole load of, Wow. Mm, let's see. And, you know, for me personally, it's not for everyone, but for me personally, mm. because for a long time, one of my hang-ups has been this need to be part of a tribe, to oh. belong. Yeah. So that will scupper me. Scupper is an English word. Okay, yeah, I don't know that. Okay. <laughs> that, will, that will trip me every okay. well, 
it doesn't trip me so much now because but it I'm did. Aware of it. But it did because I had a strong need to be belong and be part yeah. of. And so I would take into consideration, oh my God, what would people say? What would people yeah. think? How would people feel? And that was part of what kept me for much longer than I needed to. Because as I discussed with you before mm -hmm. this, my business actually started to turn when I thought, you know what? I don't give a shit anymore. Mm. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when things started to. So what, so what was that? What was that moment of like, I don't give a shit about what, about people, about money, about like people, what, people? About okay. what people think. Perfect. Perfect. And it came about because during that period, I lost a whole load of friends. A couple of friends I lost to um. death. And that was like quite like, oh my God, life is so short. Yeah. And other friends I lost through falling out. Yeah, right. <laughs> that right. kind of stuff. And I got to the point where I thought, no, it, it really, for my soul's journey, yeah. it's an individual thing. This mm -hmm. is my soul's mm -hmm. journey. And I know that. And I'm an explorer, like most of us in this tribe are yeah. yeah. explorers. Whereas, and I don't want to check out and think I didn't explore all the stuff that right. I felt I could have explored. You know, I feel like we who are led by our soul yeah. or by, you know, by that bigger purpose, mm -hmm. it doesn't fit into the narrative and the norm. It's not logical. And so, you know, I think Steve Jobs has a quote, like, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the, you know, the round yeah. pegs and the, you know, and, and I love that. I always, I always put that quote in my webinars because it's just like, mm -hmm. you're not alone if you have these crazy visions and everybody's going, but that's not secure. What are people going to think? You know, yeah. that, like that, the bullshit that keeps us stuck. And yeah. Do you think there's a gender thing? Do you think women get stuck more trying to fit in, trying to be collegial, trying to make it work for everybody? Mm -hmm. Do you know, I've not thought of that. Okay. So I'm just going to answer that. It's so interesting for me because I'm pausing because culture comes into it okay. a bit okay. for me. So when you ask that, I thought, um, I'm, uh, I'm intercultural. That's mm -hmm. how I describe myself. My parents are Nigerian. I partly grew up in Nigeria, partly grew up in London, mm -hmm. and I have a fusion of both cultures uh -huh. so I can see both sides. And I think for, for, for women who grew up in my culture, yes, I would say mm -hmm. yes, that that can hold you up a lot, lot more. Um, our expectations of women in, in the Nigerian culture is a lot more rigid uh. um, than the expectations of women in, in British culture, mm -hmm. for example. So I would say yes, and it's on a scale, depending yeah, on where yeah. you are, because I live both cultures. Right. I live both cultures, yeah. And how is that? How is that to dance the both? Because, you, you know, if you have the rigidity of your family of origin and, the, and the, the conditioning of that, for you to, like, just fly and follow your soul and, like, not give a shit about the tribe, yeah. um, oof, how did, you, how did you extricate from that? I had to walk away for a long while. Ah, I had to walk Feel away that. from my family and my tribe of origin yeah. to go figure out where I start and where I stop and what belongs to Oge. You know, and that is something so many soul-driven people, like you say, probably would have to encounter at some point when you when you said that i feel energy right and in my whole body i just felt a lot of pain for that was that a hard experience for you yes yes it was because it was yeah. a, a lonely yeah journey yeah again when you take it back to my own particular issues which was around belonging <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah yeah so to walk away, and part of my journey on this earth has been learning to stand alone and stand tall and stand alone and be okay to stand alone. Mm. That's part of a lot of soul visionary journeys, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. 
it's almost like it's it's almost the paradox. The thing that I most crave is the thing that I have to let go of. Yes. Right. Yes. In order to to get that next level or or the the next iteration. Yes. Of me. Mm. Wow. So so, so, so what? What I, I don't know. What, I don't remember the word you use. Scuttered. Scuttered. <laughs> Scuppa. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning so much today about culture. Um, were, were there places you got stuck? And, and how did you navigate that? Because these, these are big blocks. I mean, these are like the courage this took, because I see the after picture. I didn't see the before. I didn't know you as that. that I mean, I'll just, you know, share. Okay. And I had one of those, let's get to meet you on Facebook. And I'm like, holy shit, I love this woman. Like, like you're so... Mm -hmm. Oh, your energy is so yummy. You're so inspiring. So you guys follow her on Facebook. Like seriously, the posts she puts are Thank fabulous. You. Like she's a font of wisdom. You are amazing, darling. And so, so, Thank so everybody's you. looking at the after picture. Sure. Mm. Were there any bumps in the road and how did you yeah. navigate? Cause that's what I want to teach people is like, I don't you even can know get through where it. to start. <laughs> Do we need to book more time for this one? <laughs> I would say one of the bumps in the road was disappointment for me. Huh. Let's, let's go there. So I'm going to go to disappointment. Okay. Because okay. I, I nurtured it and I held on to it. <laughs> oh, my God. I breastfed it and I made love to it. Oh, my God. And then really? I threw it away and picked it up again. It was like... Disappointment in what? Like life or success. You have to know the backstory. I had got up and moved to Paris to live in Paris, oh. right at the point where my business was doing really well. It was doing well <laughs> enough. I literally put my stuff in storage, took my laptop, and moved to Paris. Okay. And I had this romantic vision of how it was going to unfold. Yeah, that was yeah. going to be my high-end stuff, which I was doing for a while. So I was traveling between London and Paris to meet clients. And, mm -hmm. and it was fun for a while. But Paris is where it started to fall apart. Ah. And that's where the dark night of the soul mm -hmm. hit. Mm -hmm. And about eight months, nine months in... I thought, oh, okay, I don't quite think this is working. The baguettes are not as romantic as I thought they would be, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you only can eat so much bread, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't working. Eventually, I had to admit it mm. wasn't working. I was in tears one day and I called my son and I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it anymore. Oh. And I'm bawling my eyes out. And he's like, mom, you know, if you're going to die, I'd rather you come and die in London. <laughs> <laughs> Such a typical son, right? That's good. <laughs> I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Right, right. Let's go die in London. So I had to <laughs> move all my stuff uh -huh. back to London. And there was a lot of disappointment that I yeah. couldn't make that work. Yeah. And like I said, I held on to that for a long time. So again, if I was looking at my past self now mm. and I'm sharing something with her, I would say, do what you need to do with that disappointment and get mm -hmm. rid of it quickly. It's mm -hmm. actually not beneficial. Mm -hmm. That's one of the few experiences I nurtured my way through that I would say was not necessarily beneficial to me. Right. Because look at me on this side of it now. If Paris hadn't happened, I wouldn't Absolutely. be Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So it was perfection. It was, it was mm. designed. Yeah. I have some disappointment stuff too, and I, and I have found it. Um, like it's, it can be an excuse to move forward. It could be an excuse for why you can't do certain things. Cause like how you said you breastfed it, you made, Oh, I'm like wearing it. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I, I get it. I get it. It's just like, it's like, it becomes a familiar. It becomes, Oh, I can't because, you know? Um, yes. so it's, whew, I didn't know that this would be part of the theme of this call, but it's, cause I think disappointment also comes with shame, right? Yes. Shame is the underpinning and shame is toxic and it's evil and it serves no good at all. It's one thing to do yeah. some reflection and, 
you know, deconstruct it, but then that's in service of moving forward. But disappointment with shame is just like, <sighs> so how did you, how did you one day just go, Psh, fuck off, we're out. I'm not doing this anymore. Like I'm breaking up with disappointment. I didn't. Again, for me, it was a, it was a very gradual, gradual. thing okay. because I had to sit down. One of the things I was very good at before this transition is I'm, I'm, I've always been a doer. So if I decide that I'm going to do something, no rock, no mountain, whatever, it's like we're going and we're yeah, doing. Yeah. And what I learned through this process, or what another thing I had to adopt through this process as I was learning how to play with my intuition <laughs> and trusting myself is I had to stop doing. Oh, that was hard. Yeah, for most people. So you had to leave your tribe, the thing you crave most, and then your operating system of go, 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 get shit yeah, done. Yeah, I had just to like dial it back. let it go Woo. in that land and then do this whole transition into the unknown. So that whole period was a period of, in, I call it my no man's land. Yeah, yeah. And it was a whole period of unknown. And I had to just stop doing and stop planning ahead i'm not saying that planning or visioning is is a is a wrong thing because i teach visioning but there's a time and place yeah and in that period that period was not a time for me to do any visioning it was a time for me to sit still and mm -hmm. listen to the damn soul Whew. That's how I began to get over the disappointment right. by actually sitting still and um, listening. Wow. So your story is so good to describe the journey. Like mm. you can't keep doing what you always did and expect different results. You can't be who you've always been and expect that next level. And so I yeah. love, you know, in your story, I hear so much courage. I hear so much courage. Yeah. And the ability to like, shh, I don't care what y'all think, shh, talk to the hand, not going to go there, right? You have to silence the voices and sometimes the voices are inside. Yes. And so what other, like if there were one or two things like that, hmm. and because it really is about who you have to be. Yeah. How do you, how do you, what, what, what do we solidify at the end here? How else do you get to the, when I'm a new creation? Mm. That's a good question. Let me see what, how I want to yeah. play with that. Do you know, it's about understanding this, that so many of us in this world right now mm -hmm. have chosen to be born in this time mm. because we have a very specific unique gifts mm -hmm. that we're bringing to this time and place right. and that is what began to change really create momentum for me when i started accepting that my gifts are okay yes they're unique um i have a particularly unique way of reading energy i can walk into a place and read energy i can sit with people and i can just read energy and i'm i'm really good at taking what i call ether stuff you know ideas mm -hmm. and i can help you bring it down and make it solid and make mm -hmm. it real and the minute i started accepting that that those were a my unique gifts and they're gifts that I'm bringing to the world. Mm -hmm. And it's couched in, I can amplify appreciation. Oh, nice. I can really amplify. When people sit in my space, they mm -hmm. grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to just go like, those are my gifts. And I've just got to own it. And there's a reason I am here on earth yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And when I look around, why not? You see what's happening around right, us? Right. People need my energy to sit and grow. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? <sighs> so for everyone listening to this, it's the same thing. You've got to identify what your unique stuff is. And bloody own that stuff. This is not a time to be playing mm. fake humility. Exactly. exactly. I call it fake humility. It's not. You've got to own. Because our souls 
the ones that are here to do the way showing stuff, we're actually grand souls. We're really mm. grand, grand souls. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are here not to rescue people. We are here because we can. Damn. Mm. Mm. I, I just want to say this. You know, I think a lot of people get like your gifts what you talked about isn't building websites being an architect it's it's energy mm. and you have value on it i know you have a thriving business and so it's easy to get into yeah but what but how could that matter how could that and and yet this woman gang look at this woman <laughs> she's got yeah. a really thriving business and and you can feel the power you can feel the conviction you can feel the can i say like transmission that happens mm -hmm. when people are with you and so don't sit there and say yeah but i'm just a therapist or i just i just do reiki yeah. or i you know exactly cuz i i had the but it, what i do is transformational it's hard and that's just bullshit right it's we need the transformational workers. Like that's really an important thing. And so I just wanted to punctuate that because it's easy to talk yourself into diminishing if it doesn't fit into the, you know, more nine to five traditional business money world. Um, so just thank you for being such a beautiful demonstration of like owning the shit out of yourself. You have to, I say to my clients, I share a secret with you. Okay. My clients come to me and they say, they'll start with something similar. And they're like, I don't know what to do. Da, da, da. I say, well, let's make it up. <laughs> How do you think I came up with the new human experience? That's what I got known for, the new human experience. And I literally sat down one day and I thought, oh, I'm having a new human experience. Ah. This was during that transition. Yeah. Oh, I'm having a new human experience. And then you put your creative hat on and say, how can I put this out in the world in a way that is fun, is delicious, and is of service? Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? The same thing with the contemporary visionary. Again, I was sitting down and then I thought, I'm a visionary, but I'm not just any visionary. I'm a contemporary visionary. Mm -hmm. I thought, whoops, where did that come from? Uh -huh. So I went and checked it on the internet, and there's not a lot of stuff on contemporary visionary. So I own the shit out of that. <laughs> and I thought, how do I put it out in the world mm -hmm. that's delicious mm -hmm. and of, of service? Do you see what I mean? Play. Mm -hmm. Play with it. And it's all energy, because... I know mm -hmm. I followed you because of your Facebook posts, because your words, your wisdom. And don't mm -hmm. most of your clients just come from, like, you don't do a massive amount of marketing. You're not doing 16 funnel steps, blah, 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 that, the bro uh, marketers. <laughs> you, no, I'm not. Yeah, you just show up and you mm -hmm. just be and you get mm -hmm. rewarded and you serve at a high level. So yeah. you're such an inspiration. Oh my gosh. Is there anything you want to say before we wrap up? Oh, what is it that I want to say? It's like, own the shit out of your shit. <laughs> own all of it. Own all of it. Because right now, we need yeah. you. So much we need so. you not in the sense that you're going to fix anything because you're not here to fix anything. Mm. But we need you in the sense that we need your energy to expand things. And the way you expand things is by putting your stuff out in the world. So I say the universe needs your dreams because it's through your dreams that the universe expands. You see? So we need you. So dream us a big dream and come and play. <laughs> you, I could not have ended it any better. Oh, my gosh. So how do folks follow you? Where do they find you? Okay. I'm in another transition at the moment, <laughs> but come and follow me on Facebook, Oge Okosieme, on my, on my personal profile, because mm -hmm. I post a lot there. So you can come and follow me there. And if, if that's all right with you, I'd like to, I need to get the link so I can give you yes, the link yes, and you can yes. post it. I want to give you guys 15, it's called 15 journal prompts to help you oh. begin to identify your audacious dream. Woo. That's true. I'm doing that. Give it to me too. Yeah, That's I juicy. Know. That That's is juicy. So. Really nice journal prompts. It's got things like when you go to a bookshop, 
where do you go yeah. where where do you naturally navigate towards mm. cool cool juicy questions like that and i'll start to help you get clarity on what your soul's nudging you to do love that well you are you this has been such a fun interview i love hanging out with you and i know that people listening and watching are going to be absolutely blessed by it and so guys follow okay follow okay and all the links are below the links are wherever you're listening or watching we got all the links um and just give us your dreams i i couldn't have ended even ended any better than that it's absolutely beautiful so thanks for listening big Thank love you. peace and bye blessings bye, bye. Hey, this is Teresa, and I'm so excited that you were with us today for another episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. You know, if you are inspired to get to that brilliant place, if you heard some wisdom today that made you think, yeah, I need some help in that area, I would encourage you to have a conversation with me. Super simple. You just go to treeskelly.com forward slash let's connect. It's a no charge, no pressure conversation. And if I can support you to clear the blocks, to really step into that brilliance, oh my gosh, it would be a delight. And I'll be honest with you, we'll just have a great conversation and see where we can take it. Peace and blessings. Bye.